Maybe it just heard me walking down the path or smelled me walking a little ways away or, you know, heard a sound that in the rustling in the leaves that could have been like a fox or some predator or something. But this is what we call detection freezing. When a person or an animal's brain detects something's not right here, something could be bad here. I smell something bad. I hear something bad. So I'm being touched in some unwanted way. This, the defense circuitry, again, at some point, if it's really a sexual assault and they're not unconscious, there's going to be a moment where that attack is detected. And when it does, this kind of thing can happen. And it may only last a fraction of a second. It may last a, you know, a second and a half or so. But it's when the brain, that defense circuitry detects that unwanted things are happening, that an attack is happening. It basically, everything stops, as we can see in this picture. Movement stops. Whatever thought process might have been going on in the person's head, that stops. Mind goes blank. And another thing that happens, and, and when, when everything stops, that's evolution selected for this response because when everything stops, one, um, this animal is now not moving and may not draw the attention of the predator let's say there's three or four other rabbit buddies he has around or she has around her, then, and they keep moving, the predator is going to be, attention is going to be drawn to them, right? So not moving is a way to protect ourselves against the, the predators focusing on us and attacking us. Um, but also it just stops everything so that whatever programs were running on that rabbit's brain or on a human brain in a sexual assault, the moments before, all that can stop and you can take in what is happening here and hopefully formulate some kind of response to it that's going to be helpful. And so the rabbit, as we can see, you know, it's in a very receptive mode. So whatever was going on in the RAM kind of its brain, that stuff gets flushed out and it's open and receiving information. And this can happen in sexual assaults and does happen a lot. There's a moment in many sexual assaults, I'd say most from what I've heard, where the brain detects that there's unwanted contact that they're being you know abused assaulted whatever they don't put words on it but that visceral detection happens and everything stops and people often say hey i froze it was a moment i froze now this word freezing can have a lot of different meanings and what i'm talking about are meanings that emerge out of the study of neurobiology and of animal behavior um and you know that meaning not just freezing is meaning oh i didn't resist um, which is fine for people to use the word however I want, they want, but I'm trying to give you like some technical meanings that can be really clarifying of what happens in these situations. And another thing that happens that we know from what we call psychophysiology research, which is an also, also an area in which I've, I've worked and published a bit, is that when, when this detection freezing happens, there's we have a sympathetic branch and the parasympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system. These are literally like nerves that go from the brainstem down to the heart. And the sympathetic branch is like an accelerator. It makes the heart beat stronger and faster. And the parasympathetic branch is like a break. That's the vagus nerve. Now the, the vagus nerve has an insulating sheath of this stuff called myelin on it. So the signal gets there really fast within like a quarter to a half of a second. Whereas that sympathetic nerve, it takes like a second or so for that signal to get there. So what we know happens in these freezing situations is the defense circuitry sends these signals out and the, the accelerator and the brake are slammed down simultaneously. And the brake gets there faster. And if we were to see this rabbit's heart rate and have a little monitor on it, its heart would actually go down for a second before maybe it went up. And so this is a moment where like everything stops, the brake goes on along with the accelerator and the animal or the person is taking in information, scanning for what's what's happening to them, what's going on here, how might I might might I get out of this? And again, it might only last a half second or a second or so, but it's an incredibly significant moment in many sexual assaults because this is when everything changes. And it's it's not something that tends to happen in enjoyable consensual sex. Now there are people who have, of course, histories of prior sexual abuse or sexual assault, and they could be having a consensual experience and they could get touched in a way or something could happen that reminds them of that past experience. And then they might have this response. Um, but in general, if it's an enjoyable consensual experience, you're not going to have this experience. And if it's an assault, this is very common. 
And so it's something to really know and have on your radar and to listen for, um, because this is when everything changes. Um, and, and this is consistent with assault, basically. And so I have this strange slide with this, you know, kind of bizarre font, you know, this kind of uh, horror font here, just to draw attention to this is a key moment in many assaults. And this is the moment when the defense circuitry detects, the defense circuitry goes into high gear and dominates other circuitries and how they function and alters their functioning. And the, the chemicals are starting to hit the prefrontal cortex to impair it. And the attention is being now dominated by the defense circuitry and, and behavior is being shifted to reflexes and habit responses, starting with that freezing, initial detection, freezing response. And so when, when people are trying to understand what happened to them, when we're trying to understand, it's like crossing a Rubicon. It's like before and after when that attack is detected. And that's usually accompanied by a brief freeze response, this detection freezing that I'm referring to. And so here I'm gonna show you a brief video that illustrates this. And so I have a couple videos that I show um, of you know, people being sexually assaulted and these, you know, as you know, Abdul talked about at the beginning, it's important for people to know themselves and to, to know that this could be triggering for them and, and prepare for it or not watch it if that's what you need to do. Um, but this is from a show called Mad Men. And it's a show that actually is pretty responsible around the way it deals with sexual assault. It doesn't do it in gratuitous ways. They really did their homework and understand how these things can happen. And so that's why I show these videos. And because people who've attended my trainings have said they find them really helpful. Um, for illustrating these things I'm talking about. And so on the left here, we have one of the main characters from the show, Mad Men, her name is Joan. Uh, she started out as a secretary, eventually became one of the partners in the firm. And then the guy on the right, Greg, is um, her fiance. And, you know, they're engaged, you know, they've had sex before, uh, but they just had a conversation with uh, one of her bosses, a guy named Roger Sterling. And R Joan used to be involved with Roger. And, you know, Roger in his alpha male way dropped some hints to Greg that he knows Joan pretty well. Um, and now, you know, sadly, we're going to see how Greg responds to that. It's a really helpful illustration of how these things can happen up to the, to the freeze response. It's going to stop a little after that. Fix me a drink, will you? I don't know. You know what these guys do all day? I've seen the movies. Pretend like I'm your boss. Donald Draper. Okay, one drink. Dr. Harris, are you trying to examine me? Maybe. <laughs> Not in here. That Sterling guy knows an awful lot about you. I've been working here for nine years. Greg, don't. It is in my office. It's okay. So, you know, at the beginning of this situation, right? She may or may not be flattered. She may just be pretending that, but she's not like super stressed, right? And, you know, the, again, this is a person who she has a relationship with. She's had sex with before. She's planning to marry this guy. And, you know, certainly by this point, you know, we can see when he slams her up against her credenza, her brain has now entered a very different state. And this, you know, if she was to, you know, come and report this assault, uh, later, you know, this would be a key moment to listen for and to, to understand, you know, what was going on before, during, and after this, and because this is the moment uh, where now she knows for sure that she's under attack. Her brain knows, that defense circuitry knows. She may not have any real words popping in her head at this point, putting any kind of label on it, but that defense circuitry is detected that she's under attack. Her eyes flutter there for a second. You can see that stunned look on her face. Um, and this is, you know, a key moment for her in this assault. And so many survivors of sexual assault 
have been through this, where there's that moment where suddenly everything shifts. They realize that this guy is not taking no for an answer. This partner is not backing off, you know, whatever it might be. Um, and that's when their brain goes into a very, very different state, which affects their thinking, their attention, their behavior and memory formation, as I've been talking about. And so that's why, you know, I show this because it, it illustrates that well. On the topic of freezing, you know, the way I've really come to understand it is that it can unfold in three types and in, in, in phases. And I'm, I'm slowing things down here. I'm literally slowing down like the first several seconds of an assault to help us really get inside what can happen for someone, what can be going on in their brain and what can happen in their experience and their behavior. And so there's that detection freezing that happens when it's detected and that can just last for fractions of a second or a second or so. And then what can happen is this kind of thing, right? Deer in the headlights or look at this young woman's face, the look of shock and surprise on her face. And this is what I call shocked freezing. So detection freezing stops everything. Whatever you were thinking was happening with this date or you were enjoying kissing him or her or whatever, and now suddenly that person is assaulting you, you've detected it, whatever you're thinking is dropped out, you're not moving. And what can happen is that blank mind can continue in the shocked Phase. And people will say, I was in a state of shock, or it didn't compute, you know, or it made no sense, or my mind went blank. Um, and this can last, you know, for a second or two. It can last for like five or six seconds. It can feel like an eternity because your brain is detected you're under attack. This person you thought you could trust or you thought you were enjoying making out with whatever is now suddenly assaulting you. Again, you may not be putting that word on it. You may not have any words at this point, right? Because your mind is blank, but you're being bombarded with the sensations of whatever they're doing to you right then or whatever you're smelling and hearing in that moment, whatever's capturing your attention, right? And so I call this shocked freezing. And because this is something that I've heard from a lot of survivors that after that initial detection, their mind is blank. And, and, and the key thing about this is that not only are no thoughts arising in their mind, but their brain has not yet generated any options for how to respond in terms of behavior. So they're being subjected to these horrible sensations from the perpetrator and the situation and what's happening in their body, but they're not having any thoughts yet and they're not having any ideas or, you know, we could, whatever, I don't want to get too technical, but no response options, I guess we could say, are, are arising in their brain in terms of behavior. And so this is, you know, something that happens to a lot of people and, and they may use the word freezing to describe this or not. I call it shocked freezing because all movement has been inhibited and they're in a state of shock and their mind is blank. Um, but they may still be taking in some really significant things that could be important information to understand what they went through and how this was really a horrific assault um, right from the get-go. Um, and so that's you know something that I want to put on your radar that this freezing response can, can happen as well. And then what I've heard from from a lot of people is that at some point, of course, you know you don't stay in a totally blank mind forever. You know, so some people can dissociate and go there for a while, but we'll talk about that later too. But in these freezing responses that can play out in the initial phases of the assault in those first several seconds, so there's detection, then it can be a blank mind for a while, but eventually you know, might even only be after a second or two, options for how to respond start arising literally in the motor cortex of the person's brain and maybe in habit circuitry too, of course. And, and thoughts may start to arise about how to respond. But what happens to so many people in these situations is that the only options that arise in their brain and in their mind, the only thoughts they have about what to do are like not good options. So they feel like bad and maybe worse. And they tend to be really extremely passive or extremely reactive options. And I really learned about this. It got clear for me from working on a number of cases of women who had been sexually assaulted in uh, massage places. You know, they would be lying on a massage table and a man would be um, massaging them. And, you know, at some point, like the guy's hand would get up near their genitals and be like, was that a mistake or whatever? And then it would go happen again. And then at some point, the brain detected like, uh-oh, this is not a mistake, whatever. And again, I'm putting words to it, 
but their brain detects are under attack, their mind goes blank. And then when options start to come to them, they would say things like, all I could think was lie there on the table and wait for him to end or jump up, run down the hall like half naked to scream for help in the, in the waiting room or in the office or whatever. And, you know, when those are the only options that are popping up in your head, they really don't feel like very good options. And people by default end up just doing nothing. And I call this no good choices freezing because it's like once those options start to arise after your mind has detected it and gone blank or your brain, then when the options that arise are often really extreme bad options and the person can't make a choice. And so they're frozen there with no choice to make. And so telltale signs of this when they say things like all I could think was or the only thing that occurred to me was and they tend to be these really re reactive or it's really passive responses and people again will beat up on themselves later like how could I have been so stupid why didn't I think you know for the massage victims you know like eventually I realized I could just roll over onto my stomach or I could you know you know push his hand away or do this or that but in these moments when they didn't have, that's their prefrontal cortex later that figures that out, right? But in the moment, and these moments can last for, unfortunately, for several moments or even minutes I've heard from people, um, the only responses that they can think of with that impaired prefrontal cortex are really bad options. Um, and so, you know, they'll lie there on that massage table or they'll lie there in that, um, you know, couch on the couch in their dorm room or in the bed in their dorm room or on the floor where the person's assaulting them or whatever it might be. And they'll just be frozen because the only options they're thinking of are extremely passive or reactive and they don't do anything. And, you know, it can be so helpful to understand this and how this um, can affect people's responses and how they kind of shame and confusion around this, but how these are totally normal, fairly common responses that we hear from um, survivors of sexual assault.